I'm in trouble, I can do it. Oh, no, there it goes. I got it. Great. All right. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming out to today's distance learning social on photography. I'm Allison Smith. I'm here located in Vermont with the UVM Extension 4-H program and I am the 4-H Youth Learning Experiences Coordinator and I'll pass it off to Lauren to introduce herself. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Lauren Traster. I am our 4-H Teen and Leadership Program Coordinator here in Vermont and Allison and I are excited to kick off our distant learning socials with you all today on our topic of photography. So, if you click on this, yeah, there you go. So, um, since we have a large group with us today and some of you are new to Zoom, we just wanted to go over some protocols that we have when we do gatherings like this. So I have gone ahead and muted everyone. Um, if when we ask some questions, we're either gonna tell you to answer in the chat box, and you guys have all demonstrated now that you know how to use the chat box, but we also might wanna allow some of you to speak. And if you, um, this is very hard for me because we can't see this, but if you go to the participant list, um, if you hover your mouse on the menu and click on participants, you'll find your name and you'll have an option to raise your hand. So if you would like to speak, when we give options to speak, just raise your hand and we'll unmute you today. So we ask that you be courteous and respectful. Um, and what that might look like is keep the chat box to discussion about our topic. You know, if somebody's cat runs behind them, don't start a whole thread about like, oh my God, there's a cat. And that's just gonna devolve and, and it will be distracting. So we wanna try to keep things just on topic um, and be kind and courteous and learn a bunch of really cool stuff that Allison is gonna teach us today. Um, since we do have our cameras on, please make sure that whatever's going on in your background is not distracting as well. And you know, try not to make silly faces at one another. We do want to feel like this is a gathering. Um, we do want to feel like we have a nice group that's pulled together. So let's just really work on limiting whatever distractions there might be. And then finally, we just ask that you stay engaged with what's happening and participate as best as you can. And, you know, when we ask some questions, participate, we'll have opportunities for you to give some feedback and have questions. So that's what our chat box is going to be for. And we're really excited that you all joined us today. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. And now I think we'll head Welcome. to our icebreaker. Oh, it's still me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So <laughs> I muted myself. So what we would like you guys to do is we want to know who's here, where you're from, because there's people from all over Vermont and other states. And then tell us what your favorite sweet treat is. So do that in the chat box, but then if you would like to share out it, um, and talk, raise your hand and we'll let some of you share out today. But let's find out who is with us on this call today. And I'm most curious what your favorite sweet treat is. <laughs> so go ahead, type in the chat box and we'll start seeing everybody's responses. I'll go ahead and do it too. You say everyone's being shy <laughs> or typing. Okay, now they'll all start coming up. We'll start people, so we'd love everybody to, to do this. And then again, if you'd like to share out after you've typed in the chat box, just raise your hand. Oh, there's some good ones. Pumpkin and apple pie, dark chocolate, anything maple, ice cream. That's what I wrote and I see some others. Ooh, Rice Krispies treats, cupcakes, macaroons. Ooh, those are all good ones. What else do we have? Yep, I, 
M&Ms, I saw it and I knew who it was before I even saw the name. <laughs> Gummies, ice cream, cookies and cream ice cream, anything chocolate. Okay, who else is getting hungry? <laughs> Allison, anyone raising their hand that would like to speak to share out loud? And that's okay. Uh, it looks like Gracie is um, raising her hand. I can unmute her. And Gracie, do you want to share? Um, yeah, I'm Gracie. Um, I live in Williston and my favorite sweet treat is chocolate ice cream. Delicious. Nice. Thanks for sharing, Gracie. Yeah, thanks Anyone for being else? The first brave soul. I'm also seeing um, Rachel Joy Bayer. I'll unmute you and you can share. I'm from Maryland, Samantha from Maryland, and I like apple and pumpkin pie. Nice. Awesome. Thanks Welcome for from sharing. Maryland. I know. Anyone else want to share out? And it looks like uh, Deanna. Um, um, my name is actually Lydia but I'm using my mom's computer. Um, my, I am from um, Burlington and my favorite sweet treat, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure. I think I like Twix and Nerds. Nice. Awesome. Those are great. I treats. haven't had a Twix in a long time or Nerds either. <laughs> awesome. Anyone else want to share out? It's so great to hear you guys and see you guys. I think those are the main volunteers that we All right. Should we get started on our content for today? Yeah, let's learn about photography. All right, let's see. Okay, so Lauren, thanks so much for getting us off to a great start with that icebreaker. Um, so I'm really excited to have you all here to talk about photography. It's a passion that I have um, always enjoyed on the side. And so I'm going to do my best today to share some information with you um, on photography and really just offer a chance for us as a group and community to explore this really great um, topic and an, a way that we can um, communicate with those around us in a way that's you know, different than speaking. Um, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words and um, it, we can use it in many ways. It can be a, a form of expression of our feelings and our emotions or what we're seeing in the world. Um, and it can also be used to record the things that are going around um, on around us in our environment and really be part of a way to engage with others. So um, for the purpose of today, when we're talking about photography, we have, you know, about 20 minutes to talk about this huge field. So I've tried to narrow it down for you a little bit today. But I want you to think about taking photographs versus making photographs. And so a lot of us have phones or devices that we can snap photos all the time of the world around us. Sometimes I just even take photo of maybe it is my favorite ice cream. And so I can remember the exact brand and flavor when I go to the store. And I would say that's when I'm doing that, I'm more taking a photo. And so what, what we wanna talk about today is making a photograph. And the difference between taking and making um, is how we use different uh, principles and elements of what's called artistic design to think about what we want in our photograph and what we want to convey to others. Uh, so we'll be talking mostly about composition um, and instead of talking about different lenses and focal lengths and all sorts of jargon and crazy words, mainly because I want you to focus on working with what you have. As we're all at home, social distancing, if you have a phone that has a camera, if you have a Polaroid, if you have an, an SLR, all of those cameras, just like in the picture that you can see, they're all valid cameras and they can all be used to make photographs. And I also want you to think about just getting really creative right where you're at. So a lot of times we think, you know, you have to travel somewhere and take photos of maybe exotic animals or cool buildings, but really think about your own daily life and what are some of the things that you want to capture either for yourself or share with other people. 
It's really about using some of those constraints. So I always think of when I have some boundaries or constraints, I really find it fun to get creative within those. Um, so with that being said, let's just hop into um, what some of the elements and principles of photography are. All right, so when we think about taking photographs, we wanna think about some of the elements. And when I say elements, what I'm talking about is these are really some of the building blocks of photography. And so these are line, shape, form, space, value, texture, and color. And so I chose a few photographs that I thought would be um, a good example of each of these. But that's not to say that just because I chose one photograph to be to represent lines, for example, that it doesn't mean another photograph might not also have lines or also use value. Um, you'll see two photos here. There's the photo of um, the boy who's on a scooter and he's riding down this road that's full of lines. And so this one's pretty literal, but you can look at um, all the different types of lines. Maybe if, if you're taking a picture of a, of a building, what, you know, what are the, the walls and the roof lines and how you wanna incorporate that in your photo to really give it some depth. When we look at that photo, we can tell through the lines in it that that little boy is really moving away from us and we can see that motion in action. Um, the other element is shape. And for this photo, um, or for this element, I chose the photo of the parrot. And shape really refers to um, having a strong two-dimensional representation of an object. And here we can see the silhouette of this parrot and it's opposed right up against a background. Um, and it's just really sharp and very, very striking. Um, and the next element is space. We think about space, and I know some of these are like really big abstract uh, kind of terms, but space is a cool one because we think of it in either negative or positive space and how we can make a statement. So I wanna draw your attention to this really cool photograph of a leaf. Maybe in the chat box, you wanna write, um, what is it that you notice? What draws your eye to that leaf? And feel free to just throw in whatever you think or feel when you look at that photograph of that multicolored leaf. Yeah, someone's, I'm seeing color contrast and color. And part of the reason why the color pops out is because in that whole space around it and how the color pops, it's black. So it's actually the absence of color. So when we, when we talk about space, we're looking at where are those areas where there's, a, where there's an absence, where there isn't any color, and, and then those areas where there, are, where there is color. And that does, uh, that does help with, in this photo, we see a lot of contrast. And contrast is actually something I'll talk about in the next, sli next slide, which is a principle. Yeah, you guys are great. I'm seeing just a ton of awesome comments about how, how the color versus that black background makes it really interesting. Value is a reference um, in terms of black and white photographs, we see, we see value talked about a lot. And I use this photo of the clouds here. So value is when you have a color in your photograph, such as black and white, and we see all the shades of gray in between. And I think the, the clouds really um, help to pick that out well. We have everything from kind of white highlights to really dark, rich, you know, ominous looking clouds. There's a lot of emotion in this photo. Um, and you wouldn't think because it's just using black, white, and gray. So a really great example of how we can use value. Uh, and now out of these photos, this, I think that there's a few photos that fit into texture, but in the chat box, throw in which photographs you feel like show texture really well. And I should have labeled them, but you can call them whatever you want. <laughs> I'm seeing the bird in the sand. Yep. Yep, the bottom left one. And the blue orange. Yeah, so a lot of these photos are using texture. 
I did pick out the one with the sand, the, the rock and sand, because I thought that that was really interesting. Here we have a picture that's mostly one color or shades of one color. So again, talking about that value, it's all orange, but we have, you know, lots of light orange and dark orange. But if not for that texture, we would just be looking at a photo of smooth rock and it would be almost like staring at a blank chalkboard. It really wouldn't be that interesting. I'm seeing also the clouds too, and that's a good point. There's lots of texture in that one. So you can see how we can play with texture and the clouds, we're looking at a really kind of bubbly, billowy look. And then with the, the rock, um, it gives us some more dimension because we can follow the dips and the curves of all those ridges in the orange rock. And uh, same thing with the parrot, that definitely um, the, the feathers really add texture and help to that shape and form. It gives that shape and form more interest. Um, and, and our final element is color. So I chose the picture of the orange um, sliced open against this blue background uh, after the orange has oddly been painted by um, painted blue. And the reason why I chose that one is because um, how many of you you can just like raise your hand visually. How many of you have learned about the color wheel? Have any of you learned about the color wheel? Okay, a good number of you have, great. So one thing we learned the color wheel is that there are colors that oppose each other and blue and yellow happen to be one of those. Um, and so we see a lot of blues and yellows in, in this uh, photo and that because they're across the wheel from one another, it makes it really pop your eye is immediately drawn to the inside of that orange um, and it makes it just really visually stunning. So um, if anyone has any questions about elements, feel free to throw them in the chat box. So I know I just ran through these all really quickly, but I want you to think of these as your tool. Imagine in your head you have a photography toolbox and each one of these, line, shape, space, value, texture, color, these are your tools. So these are the hammer, the wrench, the screwdriver. And now I'm gonna to go to the next slide and um, we're gonna talk about how you use these tools. So I've just given you the tools and then now we're gonna head over to the principles. So you're gonna see a lot of these tools popping up in these photos, but here are some more examples. And so our principles of, of art and photography really are how we arrange all of our tools um, so that we can create photos that are interesting, that are powerful and artistic. And so these are emphasis, balance, unity, contrast, movement, and pattern. And I'll start with emphasis. So emphasis refers to how we compose a photograph so that there's a strong focal point that really draws our eye in. And I would argue all of these photos really have that. Um, but I thought one that is uh, interesting is the one of the horses down here. Um, in the chat box, why don't you write in which, which horse are you drawn to the most? You can just describe. Like when you look at that photo, what's, who's the first horse that you, notice. I should have named them or something. <laughs> you all are doing great. Yes, I guess. Yeah, the one in the middle. The white one facing us, the gray one without any markings. Yep. Yeah, so great. You guys are really fun to work with. So definitely the, the horse in the middle there, the white, white kind of gray horse, um, it, he's, he or she is not the only horse that's facing us. Yet yeah, somehow our eyes are drawn to that horse first. Um, you know, there's the darker horse in the background. And just because uh, you, you, you can actually notice in this photo, um, depending on how big your screen is, but the way that this photographer used focus, they focused, it's a clear focus on the white horse's face. And so for that reason, the rest of the horses are sort of a little bit more um, blurred. And for that reason, we're really, you know, that horse is emphasized. So that's one tool that you can use. Um, 
thank you for continuing to participate. It's awesome to see all these ones coming in. And I also want to mention too that art is subjective. And what do we mean by that? But you know, you might see one thing in a photo and someone else might see something else. So these are not all black and white answers. Um, there's definitely many different ways that you can look at photography. But today we're just looking at some general principles to see, um, to understand how we use some of these tools. Um, all right, so the next principle is balance. And I chose this picture of the buildings here to show balance. So you might notice that um, in this photo, we have a pretty equal distribution of the buildings on either side of the photo. And I thought this was a really great example because a lot of times when you look at buildings, they aren't all funky and modern like this. They're actually straight up and down. So it would have been really easy to go stand between two buildings, two houses and take a picture and say, there's a house here, there's a house here, bam, that's balanced. But instead this person decided to look at this really curvy, you know, building and still find a way to take a photo of it that, um, that there's a balance to it. So it's curvy, but we have enough of a balance of it on either side that it gives a visual appeal. Um, and notice uh, there are, there's a strong use of the element of lines in this photo as well. So that, that's making it a very interesting photo. Unity is one of my favorite principles. So uh, let's see, unity is represented by this photo here with these little leaves hanging on a line. And unity is really when you take parts of a picture and then you put them together as a whole and it makes the, the picture more interesting. So someone could have easily just taken a picture of a red leaf by itself or a green leaf by itself and maybe it would have been an interesting photo but by stringing them all together we have this gradient of color again another one of the elements and I think together all of those leaves make a much more interesting photo and tell a much bigger story maybe the story of fall right going from green leaves to red leaves um, and and it creates a more complete picture um, and so Moving on, uh, which one of these photos do you all think, since we had a good discussion in the last slide, represents contrast? You can go ahead and chat in that chat box. And I should also mention too that uh, I just have about two more slides after this one of chatting and then we'll head into some actual discussion. So yeah, I'm seeing the boy reading the book, the silhouette, pumpkins, first one, top left, person reading a book. Yeah, so I chose, there's definitely, like I said, all these photos, can. there's contrast in all of them, but um, the boy reading a book is the one that I chose for contrast. And contrast is really about grabbing a person's attention. It refers to including opposites and differences in your picture so that um, you can achieve either different shapes or textures or colors to draw the eye in. And so here we're using a silhouette, um, some lighting technique to really make that outline pop. First, your eye goes to the boy reading the book. And then after you linger on the photo for a little bit, you kind of look at that sunset. Thank you everyone for engaging so much. And the last two, um, movement, I chose the photo of the skier. You can kind of see him spraying snow behind him. We have the, the horizon line is gently sloping towards the right and just shows, I mean, it's action, it's sports, so that's a good example, but it does show a lot of movement. We can kind of, through that, through seeing the spraying snow, we know that the skier is moving downhill, right? And we can, we can feel kind of that speed. And then finally, pattern is the uh, photo of the pumpkins. So there's lots of repetition here. Pattern is when we use repetition to create a photo. Similar to the leaves, I would say that's also repetition. One leaf, one pumpkin may or may not have been interesting, but this photographer chose to line up all these different uh, colors and textures of pumpkins in a in pattern with that repetition to make a really interesting photo. All right, so 
a few other things you might want to keep in mind. And I'd also like to say that we're going to send you home when we're done here with a fun challenge because we hope to uh, all get back together on Thursday. We'll talk more about that later, but um, keep some of the, these tools and tips in mind as we're going through because we definitely want to see the work that you all get to do um, this coming week and share out your photos. So some other uh, characteristics of really striking photos are they have a sharp focus. So um, whatever your photo you're taking, you wanna make sure that the thing you're trying to draw attention to is in focus. They have a strong subject. And then sometimes they can have an uncluttered background or balanced elements. So with this landscape photo, um, I would say, you know, this photographer really thought about where the mountains line up in their photograph. We're looking at balance again. Um, there's some interest in the foreground here with the water and the dock and the boat. And then um, this photo in the middle here is actually a very famous photo. It was taken in 1984. And it's a portrait of a woman named Sharbat Gula. And it was taken by journalist Steve McCurry. Um, and it's also it's known as the um, Afghan girl. And so it's known to be like a very famously striking photo. Her eyes are just looking straight, straight at you. And one of the reasons why it's so striking is because it's use of the strong subject. She's like right in the middle of that photo. Um, you know, she's framed by this color green and opposed to the, the red hood that she's wearing and clothing. Um, and she's certainly in focus as well. And I just threw in a fun one here. Um, Wendy, who's on the call, can probably correct me, but I think this is a Sky Scottish Highland cattle. She's giving me the thumbs up. So, you know, not as serious of a photo. It's not um, the serious looking girl, but the, the cow is in focus. They kind of blurred out the background here. So that way it's a cleaner background and, um, and we, you know, we definitely know what we're looking at. We're looking at a cow. So a few things to keep in mind. Um, all right. And so some other considerations or final considerations before we head into some discussion is that uh, there is what is referred to as the rule of thirds. Um, who here has heard of the rule of thirds before? Do you want to just visually raise your hand if you've heard of it? Okay. So we have a few, few seasoned photographers here. Um, so the rule of thirds is represented in um, the photo of the man with the yellow background and then this landscape photo of the fields and the canal. And when, um, what researchers have found is that when we look at a photo, a lot of times we think that I know this is actually like one of my weak points in photography is I often think I need to put the thing that I'm going to take a photo of right smack dab in the middle because that's where people are going to look. But it's actually, if you think about taking, making a grid, like a tic-tac-toe grid over your photo, you can see these lines here on both of these photographs. Um, the eye is actually drawn to where the tic-tac-toe grids crisscross. So at those intersections. So we actually visual, visually, just biologically, the way our eyes work, we look at a photo and we want to look at the photo in thirds. And so if you see this man crouching, he's not actually not in the middle. He's offset to the side a little bit and his face is in this upper hand corner. And so when you're thinking about creating photos, I challenge you as I try to challenge myself to think about what is the most visually appealing way and if I were to put a tic-tac-toe board over the thing that I'm photographing, where does, it fall? where does it fall? Does it fall right smack dab in the middle? Or can I offset it in a way that my eyes, um, my viewer's eyes will, you know, go to those areas of a third of the way down and then two thirds of the way down and similarly going from left to right. Sort of a, a hard um, theory, but if you think about that tic-tac-toe board, kind of being put over everything. Some cameras actually build this in and you can set a setting so that in real live time, you can look at the world through a tic-tac-toe board and it helps you line things up. With the, um, the landscape photo here, you'll see that the horizon line, which is where the sky meets the earth, 
is in the bottom third of the photograph. So the, the photographer didn't put it right in the middle. And so that's something when you're taking landscape photographs, a little trick you can think about is that um, don't, put, don't put the line right in the middle, but rather drop it down a little bit or, or raise it, depending on how you're looking at things. And the, the two other considerations are lighting and angle. And I chose this photograph of someone pouring tea into these cups because this photograph shows really, um, it's a great example of how they use lighting to capture the steam and also cast shadows on the table. And that adds a lot of depth, it adds a lot of feeling. You know, we get this warm feeling and we're close up to everything. So you might wanna keep that in mind as to where your lighting is. Um, and certainly in our discussion on Thursday, I would love to dive in more deep as to when we get back together to share photos of how lighting affects photography. And finally, the angle. I chose two photos here of a cup of coffee. And so not both photos are awesome photos, but they give completely different feelings. In the top photo, you know, we don't, we see the tabletop, it's very stark, it's a cup of coffee, but we don't know a lot about what kind of table it's on. We don't know a lot about the setting. We don't even know what the cup looks like that it's in. So there's a little bit of mystery in that photo, but it's a really clean photo and it's a little bit stark, but I would say visually appealing in its own way. And then the photo below it, you know, we all of a sudden we see that cup and we see that it's sitting on a table. There is also some additional props in that photo that give us a sense that maybe we know that it's winter time with the evergreen or that it might be outside or something like that. So there's some more data there, but just thinking about how angle and try when you're taking a photo, you know, try taking some different angles. Okay, so I've blabbed on enough here. <laughs> Thank you all for hanging on. And so what I was thinking we could do is I've lined up three photos and I have a few slides like this. I want you to take a look at these photos. Um, and if you would like to, you could raise your hand and talk about um, you could share with the group why you think which photo is the strongest photo based on, you know, the tools in our toolbox and how the photographer used them. Um, I'd love to hear your opinion. There's no right or wrong answer. We're just kind of reasoning through things before we uh, send you on your assignment. All right, I'm seeing uh, Samantha. So Samantha, I'll unmute you. And I should also mention, if I'm calling you by the wrong name, just keep, just say, hi, um, let me know, because I know some of you are logging in under your parents' accounts. Oh, sorry, Samantha. Okay. Um, I think the two on the sides, because like, I can see the horse like close up and then like the, then like the background is kind of like a little bit well, on the one on the left, it's a little bit blurrier, and on the right and the right, it's it's like um, it's just one full color. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. It was great insight. Uh, next, let's go to Heidi. I'll unmute Heidi. Um, I think the one on the right, also the one on the left. But the one on the left, it seems a little bit busier because she's riding around and it isn't as focused. So I think it's the one on the right. You like the one on the right? On the one where it's just her on the graph. Yeah. All right. And I see a few more people. Thank you so much for sharing, Heidi. Um, let's see. I see uh, we'll do Lydia, Ellen, and then Anthony. So let's see. Lydia, I just unmuted you. Um, I, the one that I think is the strongest is the first one because um, I, f I feel like they caught it at like just the right moment. Cool. Thank you, Lydia. And now we'll go to Ellen. Ellen Balick. Oh, I'm actually Elsa. I'm using my mom's computer. Hi, Elsa. So I think 
Um, I think the first one is the best because the other two like aren't as focused and the first one you can like really see like um, the main object in the picture and it like doesn't blend in too much and it's like really clear. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. All right, and then we'll, um, let's go to Anthony. I will unmute you. Thank you for. Hi. Um, I like the one on the right the most. Do you have a reason why? Is there something that you? It just seems like a really clear photo. Great. Awesome. Um, well, I think that, yeah. Oh, Anthony, sorry. <laughs> you have something else you want to I say? also wanted to ask, what was the assignment? Oh, we'll, we'll be talking about that in a moment. And I shouldn't so much use the word assignment. It's more just a fun challenge. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, great question, though. Hold on. Um, all right, we have a few more of these. So I think we'll continue to move along. But um, I did, uh, so I actually, was the photographer on these these photos the other ones not necessarily um but i would say yeah the the left photo and the right photo i would probably rank them like the left the right and then the middle and uh very much for the reasons that you all said is that um the photo on the left is broken out into the rule of thirds quite well um there's a lot of movement to it the clarity and similarly with this one um it has a nice clean background and visual visually appealing whereas the middle one isn't a terrible photo it's just a little cluttered and not as well thought out um all right and i'm realizing that we have to keep moving for time thanks lauren all right let's do we'll do one more round of these and then why don't we head to the challenge so i want you to take a look at these three photos and then if you'd like to share out um we'll try to get some new voices if you guys don't mind um, and then which photo do you think is the strongest and why? I'm seeing uh, some comments too. Thank you for commenting there. So the people running, I'm seeing the one on the left. Um, I'll unmute, I see Heidi. Having a hard time unmuting you. <laughs> um, I think the one with the kid sitting, it's kind of dim because it seems a little bit more focused. And also the one with the kids just looking at what they crafted. But the one with the kids running, it looks really chaotic. Thanks. All right, and then let's go to uh, to Ellen, or I think it's Elsa. <laughs> yeah, I I like the one in the middle the best because like the girl that's looking right at the camera and smiling, it just really catches your eye, and also the lighting is really good, and it doesn't look like too dim or too bright. Yeah, um, the third picture, the one on the right, that one's just like a little bit dim and dark and it's like, eh, it just doesn't uh, capture your attention as much as the one in the middle. Yeah, thanks. All right, let's go to um, one more person and we'll go to, uh, Gracie. Um, I find the one in the middle the most, the strongest, I guess, because, I mean, I find them all very visually appealing, but the one in the middle, because they're, the colors, there's a lot of blue and orange, and you can tell kind of what the main focus is, like the girl in the middle is very, she pops out, but I, I like all the pictures on Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all the enthusiasm. And I'm also enjoying reading the um, comments too. 
Um, one of them says, you know, all of them are telling different stories and that they feel like the one on the right, um, you know, tells a story about the end of the day. So it's true, like all of these have different colors and do tell their own story. Um, I would say, depending on what you like, definitely the, um, the photo of the girl in the orange and running, there is a lot of motion to it. So it's a little bit more chaotic, but she's definitely a strong focus and uh, your eye is drawn to her immediately. Um, whereas the photo on the right might be color wise a little bit dim, especially in comparison to these two photos. However, put in the right place, it gives a lot of emotion because of the composition. Um, and then the photo on the left with the girl in the pink shirt and the girl in the black shirt, um, that one is maybe, uh, I think, you know, it definitely still uses kind of the rule of thirds, um, but the background is a little bit more cluttered. And so uh, it, it's just not quite as striking and doesn't tell quite the depth of story. But again, there's no, no wrong answer here. Um, okay, so, in the interest of time, I this is such great discussion. I am going to skip over our last one. Um, we can always go back to it if people want to hang on. Ah, sorry, I overclicked. There we go. Thanks for back back arrows. All right, so thank you all for for uh, the awesome discussion. So we wanted to set up a fun challenge for all of you that you could try to um, implement in your life this week to kind of spice things up with all of the fun routine disruption you've had. But since you all are uh, interested in photography, we would love for you to do a day in the life challenge. And so a day in the life challenge um, asks you to document one full day of your life this week. So from wake up to your bedtime, if you can, try to take a picture every hour. You might need to set a timer to remind you, or maybe you put a post-it note on your refrigerator or your computer, whatever you need. And then you can also use for a subject, if you want to document like a, fav like a day in the life of your pet or a day in the life of your favorite toy. So you can see we've got Woody over here. And then this is like a little Star, Star Wars character. Um, and then a photo over here is like, you know, that normally wouldn't be that interesting of a photo of a bed, but it's actually a very pretty photo. Um, so our hope is that you pick any day uh, this week. So it'd have to be, I guess, Tuesday, Wednesday, or it could be Thursday. And then you come back and join us. Um, Lauren, correct me if I'm wrong, on the same Zoom link. And what we'll do is we will uh, share out our results. And Lauren will tell you a little bit more about how we can do that. Yeah, if you, so yes, I'll send out the link again for the Zoom, um, but Allison, if you can unshare your page, yeah, sorry. I'll go ahead and share so they know what we're going to do. There we go. So what we're going to do after we hang up, you'll get an email from me that's going to give you a link to a Google folder. There's directions in this folder if you don't know how to create a folder and upload. So everything you would need to do is in this document I just clicked on. Because what we're going to ask you to do is create your own folder that you're going to put your photos in. So I have this example folder. There's your name, photos. And that's where you're going to plop your photos into. I had started, since I'm working from home, this is my new office assistant, Humphrey. And I've had to, you know, create a new workspace, but I haven't finished yet. So you'll put all your photos in here because I think it will be cool for all of us to see your day in the life. But you're going to have to choose one photo that's your favorite. And you're going to name it your name with an underscore favorite, just like I've done in this example. And then what you're going to do, you're going to make a copy of that photo and put it in this folder called favorite photos, because that's what we're going to share out on Thursday. We'll, we'll call up each picture. We'll be able to share it right to the screen and you'll have the opportunity to talk about 
your favorite photo. And we won't make you, we hope everyone will want to, but that will be a challenge by choice. Um, but the directions on how to copy your photo and move it in is all in these directions right here. And if you want to look at the slides from today, and remember that this is the PowerPoint that Allison's been using today is, is also in this folder. So I'm going to stop sharing right now and see if you guys have any questions. I am seeing uh, some raised hands, and I don't know if it was for questions, but Heidi, did you have a question? Let's see, let's unmute. I'm trying to her. unmute here. <laughs> yeah, I can't get it. Oops. No, I just forgot to lower my hand, sorry. Okay. Okay. Talia, did you have a question? Okay, we'll unmute you. Okay, Talia, go ahead and speak. Um, is the project or fun project you're giving us like optional or do we have to do it? No, nope, this is something we'd love for you to do it and come back on Thursday. But if this is not your thing, then, then no, we're not going to force you. We just hope that you guys might want to do it. Um, we think it's really cool. This is a unique time for everyone in documenting what life is like right now is actually part of like a historical record. So it'd be really cool to see all the different ways people are, you know, spending their days and getting it documented through photographs. Okay. Any other questions that people have? Raise your hand. So I'm going to ask, keep thinking if there's questions, but in the meantime, one of the things that I would love to know, if you didn't um, do, put your name in for the icebreaker, could, could everyone just go ahead, put their first and last name into the chat box, because I want to make sure I, when I send things out, I know who was actually here today, instead of sending it to people that didn't join us today. Alexandra has her hand up. Oh, well, that's weird. We don't see that. Alexandra, I'm going to unmute you. Um, Go ahead, Alexandra. When do you have to have it done by? So we're going to get back together 3 o'clock on Thursday. So if, as long as you get your stuff in the Google folder, uh, probably by 2.30 on Thursday, that would be good. OK. Good question. Any other questions? And please go ahead, write your first and last name in the chat box just so I can make sure I send everybody who is here the link and not email people who did not join us today. I see people writing their names. Thank you, I appreciate that. Go ahead, type your name first and last if you, just so we know. Any other last questions? It looks like Talia might have another one. Talia, you have another one? I will unmute I, you. Oh, I just unmuted her. Oh, you did. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Talia. Okay, um, so I might do it, and my computer is being weird, and it's not letting me send in my first and last name. So. Okay, I will write down that you were here. A nice, because I can see your name on your login. But thank you for letting me know that your computer is not letting you write. Appreciate that. Thank you. Anyone else? Can we give Allison a big thanks for teaching us some really cool things about photography today? I can't wait to see the photos that you all come up with. This is going to be awesome. Well, yes, I loved I having discussion with all of you. So thank you so much for engaging. This was our first distance learning social and you were an awesome crowd to uh, test the waters out on and try this. So I hope to see you back on Thursday and we can talk more wow. what you like about photography and really hear from you direct, directly, which would be great. Yeah. So you guys, you can just take your mouse down to the bottom again. You're going to see where it says leave meeting. So you guys can click out.
We hope to see you on Thursday. Thanks for joining us. Allison, you can hit uh, stop the recording.